a lot of logistics. Um, they also called me maybe two or three weeks before the trip was going to start and said, oh, by the way, we're bringing these big crystals with us. And they each have their own special box that were like these big crates uh, with, you know, foam, custom foam, you know, 20, 30 pound crystals. When we arrived in China, they weren't too happy about that at customs and they had to, you know, declare, you know, each crystal and look at them. And, you know, we, we pulled it off. We, we had a remote town in southeast China. We had uh, a point, a meridian point in Khatan Bulag, Mongolia, which is in the south Gobi Desert area. When we drove across the border from China and we made it to the point, my Mongolian staff had set up a giant yurt, gur, and inside it they had a ice box um, with a cord going out the back with a generator like a hundred feet away and full of cold drinks and that, and boy that was a really welcome sight. We got to sleep out under the stars in tents, and we went up to Menza in Russia, and then we chartered the hydrofoil on Lake Baikal and took the hydrofoil up to Davsha, which is in the northern eastern side of Lake Baikal. Very remote but beautiful part of the country. And uh, we got dropped off by the hydrofoil, and five hours later it started raining, and it never stopped until they picked us up. <laughs> Then we got back on the hydrofoil, went across Lake Baikal, and uh, dried out everything in the beautiful sunshine and at uh, Olkhan Island. That was a very challenging trip, but uh, um, also uh, very satisfying to, uh, you know, accomplish as a company and also as a uh, to see some of these remote places in Siberia that I would never had the chance to go to uh, otherwise. Somebody had uh, dreamed up this, uh, you know, kind of impossible trip.